First of all, welcome to the series on media and society where we analyze trends and concepts or depictions of certain things or people in the media. You might have come across this type of content depicting the old money aesthetic. So what is old money? Old money is inherited wealth, so it refers to established families. The aesthetic can be described as more classy, traditional and chic. And new money, on the other hand, refers to individuals or families who have acquired wealth recently, it could be the Kardashians or any influencer, for example, uh, showing luxury bags and other items with like many logos on it. That's usually what people um, associate with these aesthetics. The new money aesthetic is usually more perceived as trashy and cheap. New money could refer to entrepreneurs, athletes, influencers, actors, so people who became rich later and are not from a rich family. Aesthetics have always been a thing on Pinterest and now this can also be found on TikTok. There are even accounts dedicated only to showing tons of different aesthetics, so you can find one that you like yourself. Of course, this only refers to mainly outfits or imitating some lifestyle because you can't really be part of the old money community without inheriting money. You can only choose the same brands, maybe the same hobbies or try to make your Instagram feed uh, look old money. So what is part of the old money aesthetic? In terms of fashion, old money often refers to Ralph Lauren and in general if you look at Ralph Lauren ads they are pretty much old money aesthetic. Uh, tennis, golf, polo, all that is part of it. Then we have Burberry, Lacoste, Hunter, Barber, MS, Armani, but also many brands more unknown. But it never is super extravagant, but rather simple and classy. It is definitely about playing polo, tennis or golf, attending royal escort or charity events, dinner parties, like this gossip girl aesthetic basically. It's going on vacation in the south of France or Italy. And because it's rather high class and exclusive, this aesthetic also reminds us of royal families maybe who have similar hobbies, um, they too go to polo events, are exclusive and wear rather classy clothes. Especially the dress code for women is very modest, longer skirts, they show less cleavage and shoulders, but also we have this like gossip girl aesthetic that is more like modern. The way Kate dresses herself and her children is a good example, so in terms of fashion it's not always about spending a lot of money. She also was seen wearing H&M or similar brands. And then old money is also often connected to education, especially Ivy League education, as mentioned, or even boarding schools, like everything that's international and more exclusive, private, if it's in Switzerland or somewhere else. What your private school says about you, New York City edition. So you go to Spence and it must say in your IG bio that you go to Spence. You only wear white sneakers, they have to be white. And your principal makes sure you enroll into Harvard, Georgetown or Cornell. That's like the holy trinity for you. Now you go to Chapin, then your dad 100% is a hedge fund manager or a managing partner at a famous law firm. Wear the most laid back with the coolest style. You wear these golden goose sneakers and you're obsessed with love check fancy. You'll either get into Columbia or Cornell. No discussion. I Parents own a $50 million townhouse on the Upper East Side and a $100 million mansion in the Hampton. So while referring to tradition and being super nostalgic, this aesthetic or trend is also international in a more upper class way. So upper class international mingling to get the best education basically. Part of it is knowing foreign languages, mostly French, besides English of course. And what does this look like? We're gonna go through some examples both on TV and in terms of celebrities. If you've watched the show Dynasty, you might already know this, but a dynasty refers to a succession of people from the same family who play a prominent role in business, politics or another field. For example, we have the Ford family. Henry Ford founded this company in 1903. His descendants now have an ownership of 2%, however, that's still a lot of money. Then we also have Drew Barrymore's family. They have been in the entertainment industry for generations, so this is another example. The Rockefellers, of course, are an example of an old money family too. They probably immigrated to the US from Germany in the early 18th century. They founded a business, invested in real estate and stocks. They're basically all named John and still have a lot of money and power. The Lauren family is another example and the name Ralph Lauren pops up in almost every post or TikTok about old money, brands, 
His actual name was Liefschitz, sounds pretty German, he was also Jewish, he is now worth seven billion dollars. Then we have the Vanderbilts, um, immigrants from the Netherlands, are also an old money family. There are a lot of examples in real life. A typical new money example would be the Kardashians. Sure, they weren't exactly poor before they started keeping up with the Kardashians, but now they are worth billions and they represent this new money lifestyle, very cheap looks, like these car pictures with an expensive watch that was very popular on Instagram, for example, lots of Louis Vuitton or Gucci bags. They're gonna like you for who you are, not what you wear. I'm just kidding. Well, the old money aesthetic usually keeps everything natural and it's rather maybe an effortless chic style, which is why many perceive this as more high class and the other one as more trashy, including natural hair colors and usually no obvious plastic surgery. But new money is Botox, boob jobs, BBLs, and everything more flashy and noticeable. In the early days of Instagram influencers, there has been this obsession with new money, showing lots of designer brands, watches, fast cars. We also see this in these like alpha male podcasts. This is also an example of this like trashy lifestyle. Getting lip fillers and showing off items you can buy not only in the western countries but this designer obsession can also be observed in china or maybe dubai especially where they also have these photos on instagram where they show a lot of cash in china hyper consumerism abstract identity the author from the parsons school of design in new york writes hyper consumption is often defined as the extreme maximalist consumption of goods commodities for non-functional purposes also attached to hyperconsumption is the significant pressure to consume those goods in order to shape one's identity can one shape identity without consumption luxury capitalism advertisement exclusivity and authenticity are important social agents in the consumptions of objects and experiences Advertised goods, travels, and market landscapes form universal codes of luxury that contribute to the representation of high status in society. And different cultures also define luxury differently. In China, luxury in the Han Dictionary is defined as something that is the opposite of daily necessity. Luxury often refers to consumption that is related to entertainment and decoration. The Chinese MBA database defines luxury from the economic perspective as a product that has the highest value or quality based on seven traits. These traits include the material, that it's uh, special and the product is scarce, a symbol of wealth, looks like the nicest, shows the owner's personality, exclusiveness, a sense of distance and a very high emotional value. So the concept of luxury is mostly embedded in objects or goods. One reason why this aesthetic is seen as so trashy and cheap today is that many bought fake designer items and converted it into ghetto fashion. On some, another example is the Rory Gilmore family, like the Gilmores, though she and her mom don't really live that lifestyle or fit the old money aesthetic. Rory only has certain benefits um, because she's a Gilmore and the Gilmores apparently are worth around $50 million. Here, the old money aesthetic is mostly shown when Rory is at her grandparents' place. Then we get to experience the wealthier yet traditional side of her lifestyle, which is combined with this Ivy League aesthetic, going to Yale, because um, higher education or Ivy League education is just pretty much old money. So we are in some way in this era of nostalgia, and this can maybe also be seen in the old money aesthetic. Often. It looks like an old movie, it's focused on either New England or the south of France or the British countryside or cities like New York or London but in a more traditional way. Tradition plays just a very big role. The old money aesthetic is in some way a vintage aesthetic maybe and shows like Gossip Girl and Elite show how people are interested in the life of the rich in general. In Elite, the Spanish series, um, they showcase like this clash of old and new money. Carla, for example, through her mom, is part of the Spanish nobility, which is a huge contrast to Rebecca, who grew up very poor, and then her mother became rich with drugs. And in the series, Carla, besides her sexual adventures, is more classy, and Rebecca, she swears a lot, she's um, 
Her style is also considered very cheap, so both her personality and her outfits distinguish her from the old money aesthetic, um, even if she is rich. So because the old money aesthetic is so old <laughs> or traditional, it speaks to our nostalgic minds, so we think of times that were simpler, maybe more stable, that seemed to be less problematic and stressful and had less technology compared to our digital and fast-paced lives now. If you think about it, there are plenty of shows about rich girls, guys, teens, people in general. Gossip Girl, 9210, Privileged, A Dynasty, Crazy Rich Asians, Revenge, Arrow. Um, there's one girl on TikTok, she became famous for having these breakfast and bad videos with her mom and it gives off Gossip Girl vibes very much. Uh, they're not in line with the old money aesthetic, more modern, but still like the golf, country club. You can find some old money aesthetic elements there. Come in! Good morning, my little hippo! Morning, mama bear! Now this morning, Dad and I are taking the buggy Ooh. and we're going to the driving range and then afterwards okay. we're going to look at jet skis. Oh gosh. <laughs> and I was just thinking maybe you could invite your girlfriends for cocktails tonight because Dad and I are going to the country club. Okay, yeah, that sounds good, okay. thanks. Love you, Dad. Love Bye. you. <laughs> maybe it's also a mix of old money and new money. And people are still really into following people that have this rather wealthy lifestyle or even movies like Richie Rich and Wild Child. And the popular girl in most movies is the rich daughter, for example, Regina George in Mean Girls, uh, Sharpay in High School Musical, and then we have shows like Real Housewives of XYZ, there are so many of them somewhere in the States, and of course also Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid and her mom, they were in these shows. One reason why the old money aesthetic is popular is because it's simply about fashion. It can be simply about liking the style and wanting to wear polo shirts and more classy items. Or not even polo shirts, but maybe these Ralph Lauren shirts and skirts that make you kind of look like you go to Yale or to private school. It can also be the whole lifestyle about wanting to belong to this exclusive group or at least looking like someone who belongs to an old money family. It's the same with most aesthetics. People either just adopt the fashion, the style or a lot of other levels of the aesthetic um, as a lifestyle. So it can be about this very exclusive touch that the old money aesthetic has. It kind of screams, I'm better than you, I'm more educated, I don't. I have more resources and I don't need to show it off. Um, like the new money aesthetic that is very flashy. This old money aesthetic is just more decent. It's kind of meant to be casual but still chic. You might have guessed that exclusivity is so interesting to us because of scarcity. Whatever is scarce is more valuable and what is always there, always available is kind of cheap and whatever is luxurious can't be afforded by everyone so that is why it's so interesting to us and whatever group is exclusive can't be entered by everyone obviously so this access barrier is what is fascinating and makes it more desirable in a world of luxury 2020 the author says the future of luxury and consumption lies in the changes that are bound to happen as young adults grow into being the majority of the market segment and implement their consumption mindset as the demand for both luxury and rarity grows, brands and designers will be forced to create a new channel that meets the growing needs of customers. Although the materialistic qualities of luxury will likely continue to be apparent, I think the general concept of materialism will change as people learn that materialism and consumerism can be applied to more than brand name items. And that's why there are so many people recreating the old money aesthetic with affordable items, both from Zara or DIY furniture at home, and just try to live this lifestyle in a way that doesn't necessarily correspond 100% to the reality of old money families. This can be just wearing a classy bun, a chic but simple outfit, playing some tennis in their spare time, and reading classic literature. So that's why I said it's not really about being rich, but maybe more about the style. New money is about brands and showing off with Gucci etc and about consumerism while old money can be a low-cost aesthetic if one knows how to do it properly. If you know how to combine items you can easily just uh, thrift or buy at cheap stores and still find if they are like good quality obviously find items that look very much old money but are still affordable. 
Of course, you can mix aesthetics or not follow any particular aesthetic at all. The old money aesthetic definitely is a very special one in terms of exclusivity and what it represents. And this aesthetic, if adapted as a lifestyle, also kind of determines someone's personality and hobbies, just like other aesthetics. And we see this aesthetic on screen sometimes. It's a contrast to the more modern and edgy trends at the moment and to the new money aesthetics, which is considered more cheap. It's also this counter movement to all the reality shows maybe um, that seem cheap, rap and hip hop culture. And the aesthetic wants to show a more sophisticated lifestyle. It stands for education, wealth, a privileged background, um, and just overall is an aesthetic that's connected to being cultivated in terms of art, classic literature, and music. I saw one TikTok of a girl talking about how people want to look like they inherited money and didn't work for it. But the aesthetic is probably more about having this history, tradition and style that is not cheap and bragging with like Gucci belts, which is now the same style as the ghetto style because of like rap culture and this development. So I, I don't think it's about this whole, oh, I inherited money and now I look like this. It's probably just more like a style. But that was it for today. I hope you got to know a bit more about this aesthetic and why it's popular at the moment. If you don't want to miss out on other videos in the series, uh, on Media Society, subscribe, and then I see you in the next video.